morning, everyone. My name is Matthew. So, 
you can try to back and All those questions that so you cash back. So you can ask those questions that you can ask those questions that you Then you get to the problem of asking this one that you can see to go to the next question. And so we're doing the same question. So even though we are not working on the same data, we will put that line for bouncing back and forth. And so we will do the same question. Then you can say, okay, that's good. Yes, but I mean, you are going to do tons of CPU caches in the world, but the value is there. And we have to be more When you're at the point where the new person is doing it, you are the main So, so those pipelines need to be So, every time that you have a new person adding, that's a new So, if the element is not aligned, uh, we are comparing that performance. The R has not aligned, what is going to be done? You keep adding, you reuse this model, we are going to your CPU cache. A few more about the first implementation of the model of the kernel. So, it's still the allocator that is allocated per CPU. So, it basically has a kernel way to keep all the CPU. And the rest of the allocator is going to allocate everything back and forth. And the same amount of CPU. So when you're looking at how you have a question for CPU on the table, you want to have more space on top of CPU. So that's what I'm saying. So what I did was, of course, add very high CPU space. So what I did is purposely make a bigger area of space. Uh, it works with the memory pool, so I have to work at the same time that we have the memory pool, so the total of the memory So basically, uh, it takes all the time that we are going to have to access to the data stores. So by the time, uh, it takes a lot to have to go to the ring of the 64 bit bus that can be requested uh, by the user. And so even within the pool, you can use the memory to come up with full CPU. So here's the full layout so I don't try to make it very long of uh, uh, the case. So you can see here you have a kernel of CPU and then you have two kernels of the A, then two of B. You also have a kernel of the I space that is either on the CPU like cluster B and then you have all of the commands and so on. So the actual packet, so it's one thing to up to the memory, then you want to access that memory to uh, go and actually store the data that you are able to store it. So, if we look at the other pattern for the uh, array and the pattern, you're basically taking the base of your array and you're basically accessing by your the number multiplied by the number of two by five per CPU slot. So, we're swapping things around here. So we have the memory allocator, what we do. So what you put as a default value when you allocate memory is a pointer for example, base pointer to the uh, that contains information about the the full array and the data stores. And then we just have to add to the full array the full number multiplied by the full stride. So that way we reach the same CPU. Uh, right, right, 64K. So, I'll that in the middle. So, we basically record a pointer to all the area of CPU units, but that will be meant to be used as a default accessor that will also multiply by the number of uh, uh, that will add to the order of the stride. It also contains information about the state for the rendered state itself of the array. So, so, the uh, um, the uh, version of the of how it works is like this. So you have all these things, what you can see in addition are a canary page, header page, image map page, and of course uh, specific tools. Uh, I will explain in a few minutes. So we have uh, what happens in my email context slash area in the cloud database because there are people that explain each of those things are what you see. But it's also 
overview. So, value range, time to memory, which often requires reserve pictures for Whatever page you so you can explain you rank alignment and pointers to make people back and forth. I had a bit of a say that to So, I think so let's just bring out items on the tool. So, I want to provide a because when it allows the the users of that API. Uh, but what I want to do is that by requiring the users to keep a full full printed on each of the characters you want to use. So there's a two way where we could have more features, but if I want to use three items, you can go find which one in order to add uh, the pointer to the full free list. So how can we so that's the basic problem. So, uh, then I find So, to go back to this item. So, the address I have, make them the to use it. And by the same path, we can In fact, we can use it through the page like before. So, this is not like how the the last structure makes up weight is 36. Um, the other one is uh, before the base of the brain. Uh, so as far as I know, there's no way to form a line right up next to the other pages. So I will be doing it with three apps that will be large enough to warrant that it will contain line of pain and both. Which one allocated every one? So for initialization, so that's like a big problem uh, uh, in terms of just because. So if we look at the human machine, the very bad spiral goes for um, and then if we try to use the process of the one order of possible and it's right in the code like to zero that like memory. So, so right, you can see at the end of what we have given like on each of those pages and allocating the rest of the memory for each of those CPU pages. Even though if you get here in those CPUs, if you get CPU server, get the CPU pages, but you are in the app. So that memory to be used. So it's a good time serving user memory. So what I uh, request for this, so I combined the notion of allocated memory to allocated memory. So this is optional, right? If you can allocate that zero, you can allocate memory without the repetition. But I'm going to take the concept of allocated memory and giving the argument for initialization to the function. Um, so I take this information and I store it in the image. So in this case, I will show you is right after you run the same value range. And it contains the previous, a copy of the value that were passed to the input function. So I, I can use so, so that is the range is a copy, which is a pass to our passes. So I can copy and write app instantly when I create the machine. So the value range is can you make the presentation full screen? Uh, no. Uh, like this? Like I don't think it's too full controls. No, I don't have control on that. We can turn it. Never mind. So that's the value of the uh, 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 uh,
goal of that process is to all and it's all what we call all the peers. These are both they are a private lab, so those are second rack. So idea is to do a um which uh you will observe the way I was as soon as you can do it from the lab that is that second rack. So a process for the brain speech and for the brain you want to add. Okay, so far so good. So, back to this. So, when we allocate an icon, we put the content to the brain, we iterate on all of those features, but we do not write to those. We read the content that is observed to us from their own point of view. It is my point of It means they can First of all, why support fork? Yeah. Are, do you, are you aware of use cases where you have to support fork? I mean, especially for football programs, there might be for the grounds I can see, but only less that is But I mean, the sense is that people would have to from the area like this. So when you talk about that, the first would be to keep around in the time. So I do not want to expose uh, something that would affect the behavior to 
actually. I, I mean, for example, I mean, maybe like intercept fork and say not supported. And if you take a look at most applications, fork is rarely used, fortunately, nowadays. Uh, so I, I'm just curious, like, if you have like real, like, real workloads that need fork and they need to be fully compatible with that, or if you can just defer that and like have your perfect nice library and fit, live a happy life and say it's not supported and un yeah. until it's really required because like the like the typical fork exec ve use case there are better ways to do it nowadays to the most degree and fork i mean of course firefox uses it uses it and a bunch of other ones but like most applications shouldn't be using fork yeah. one of the problems is like application use cases i also want to use that with any Okay, so you, 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 what you're saying is you, 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 you might not have control over what, okay. Uh, the, the other thing I was wondering about, uh, you, you, you mentioned that like this, uh, you, you want to intercept the first access after fork. Did you look into the uh, at fork callbacks where you yeah. get a call before you fork, after you fork, and you can just set this up a lot yeah. ahead of time? and it's going to be hard to implement but maybe what you actually want to use is you want to replace the file descriptor that is stacking and existing mapping so you, like you would still have copy and write on the original pages because may, maybe they're like you already modified something and that has to be like moved into the child so the child has to see the same values if there was copy and write but you want to clone the memfd right and then you would just want to tell them yeah. like have a new file descriptor and leave the copy and write the pages in there Right, and exchange yeah. it in the mappings and leave whatever has been copied right there because you don't want to consume more memory. Yes, that's what we, we can talk about that. That might be feasible more than like having special shared whatever. It, it's going to get complicated. Thank you. I think if I recall, we didn't want to use secret at fork because for the cases where you just fork in executing the moment you had the overhead of really allocating all this memory for nothing. Well, The issue with uh, fork and exec is that the arguments for the exec may be passed in this memory. And that can be concurrently modified by other threads in the process. And to actually pursue memory after the fork. So you mentioned the single-threaded case. Uh, do you have an example? I'm a little bit confused why a single-threaded program would be using per CPU. Well, if you have a single-threaded program, I can use the CPU with a certain part of the And then you can use from a single-threaded Um, okay, 
words about other features available. Thank you. 
file the copies to the chip. You can be a great person. I like to think that uh, most of that. Uh, and all, yeah, so that is what I was talking about. The uh, I did the presentation actually on the Sunday last night, where I had to do a secret video controller to allow protein coding in. So currently, you have a very simple point between the on to get it out of the video set, or you can press the video con controller. Uh, I want to ask uh, when you use the uh, perceived memory, is there some construct to, to ensure that uh, when the perceived memory is being assessed, the, the past won't get migrated to another CPU? Yeah, okay. Uh, but, so, there are constructs that skip out to the correctness of using perceived memory, but it does not do so by successful migration. It does so by in user specific section if a migration would happen very close to one section. So this is part of what the rest of the box sequence system clock is doing. So that system clock basically says the trunk, so it actually does that. So the middle is not a good for a It raises it straight back to the kernel. So it tells the kernel that it's doing a, um, a port to create the trunk. Part in the critical section. So the critical section goes back and says you want to do a subset set with your load of tables, subset with breaks, and so on. That's all the subset set. So basically, kernel takes the queue or likes the queue. So anything that you do there over the critical section is going to move the instruction uh, point to a subset that that's in the, the printer. So is well, I think that's when you think uh, it's not the most best, but only for the CPU. Uh, so there's no good cases for that. Okay, thanks. Okay. Or when you do that, you can do it right. Okay. So, uh, I mean, you could benefit from having a CPU that is certainly the secure one, and then uh, makes to make sure that even if it's a good uh, this does work uh, in terms of. Uh, Transparency, uh, but you still get the, the gains of per CPU, gains of per CPU are still uh, slower. Other questions, Dimitri? I have a question. Um, there's another possibility instead of using the security. 
something uh, because then what if we can protect prot known in your CPU range and then CPU just fetches fetch the stack fault and uh, copy the data? Yes, so that's, that's the issue. Yeah, I mean, I want to from all level items, right? So requiring or writing the require to I mean, you interact with the options and yeah, I can use that. I thought of other solutions not to go there. Yes, over there. Maybe you, the folder team, could do something. It, it might require extension. Thanks, Matthew. That was a really good talk. Um, I didn't quite follow the poisoning part. Would you be able to elaborate a bit more on exactly what you poisoned? You poisoned the init page, the shared page, as well as the private mappings, or how does that work? Uh, I'm thinking of a case where the, you poison the shared page and you race with a cow, and whether you can end up with tearing and the poisoning or something. Yeah. So the poisoning is in the same way as we used to the the where it's So let's go back to the slide. We have the diagram. Yes, okay. So the so when I allocate that place to the shared value, that's where I record all the over and looking for me to see the server and all the things that are out of the top. When I want to point on the server, I write the point on the transcription in a PDF version. I see if it's final, I will be able to receive it. If not, I need to go back to that video and do it. Save that thing. Okay, I understand. So this is a little bit scary, I suppose, if you've got a use after three, which maybe is out of scope anyway, but you can at least see a half point value in there or something. Well, before you've done the check. I don't think it's a problem, it's just a thing to be aware of if you wanted to add sort of kind of sanitizers to this or something. It feels like that might be a thing to get right. Yeah. Okay, we'll just talk afterwards. Thank you very much.